Okay, very good afternoon here on the 19th of July 2019. Rishi Patel, co-founder, Master of the Markets, the Elite Traders Conference, Traders Open Day. Very warm welcome to this video on our weekly market update. So for those of you that are following us on a regular basis, you'll know about the weekly market update where we analyze the trades taken for the week uh, that's just finished. And this is always published on a Friday, so we can uh, do a wrap up to see what the performance was. So a slight loss this week of 0.25% uh, is the actual uh, loss on the on the trading when you combine both the live trading room and the elite room together. The elite room actually did finish up 0.75%. Um, they took three trades, so uh, one of them was on the dollar yen. The dollar yen actually opened last week uh, on this primary just here uh, and we short that uh, all the way down to our target was around about this region just here and that was only taken off the market uh, on on yesterday's bar so really we had to hold that for six days before that hit target on the system on the cash we exited um, around about halfway point around about this level here um, but on the system that obviously ran and hit its target for 2.16 percent upside then uh, prime profits also took a loss on the pound dollar on the elite room um, which was uh, this primary bar just here uh, we took that long and that went against us immediately overnight that was a loss of a percent and we also made a small loss on the aussie dollar as well uh, same thing prime profits we looked to take this bar long uh, although our stop was in the right place just here this high did confirm and so our trade was invalid and hence we uh, eliminated that trade and we took that off uh, on the close of this bar just here the next bar subsequently did shoot up and that would have been uh, a profitable trade from prime profits perspective but uh, it would have been against the rules so we followed the system on that one a little bit unlucky because this uh, confirmed uh, so we had to um, go ahead and exit the market just there but it we followed the rules and that's what counts on the live trading room um, which has brought the weekly results down we did take a single trade uh, on the gold bars PO strategy and that was on the euro US dollar uh, so we took the euro US dollar short on this PSWB just here this is the first PSW we were expecting to fail uh, and so we took that short here our entry was here you can see we were just entered into the trade and then the trade did reverse against us into the later part of the evening it's a little unlucky just there this is now pushing lower which looks like it's going to fail the PSWB but there really is nothing that we can do uh, about that one unfortunately at this time um, it doesn't follow any of our our rules and there's no way we can actually get into that particular opportunity so we uh, finished the net week with a uh, 0.25% loss uh, which is not bad I mean we're keeping ourselves pretty much even throughout this period of time uh, where we are down net down we are keeping the losses very very small and that's the idea behind what we're doing here because we are only this is something that our mentor taught us that I'll never forget actually because it really resonated with me and really put things into perspective and he said that we are in business for those one or two months in the year that come and completely clean up right they're double digit months and they're massive and that's what we're in business for so we have to last the long haul through the period of the year up until we get to that um, up till we get to that point so we have to have faith in the system that it will continue to do what it's done in the past uh, and with the logic so strong in the trading strategies that we're using with the concept so strong in a way that it must continue to work it makes it much easier to have that faith in the system that it will continue to work so that's what we're seeing at the moment so we have updated our journals We've documented the loss of the week and we'll continue to persevere. Two more weeks left in July and we'll see where we do finish. Uh, and then obviously for August, we'll be looking to take a short break. Uh, no trading in August, as you know, for those of you in Master of the Markets, no trading, no live, live trading room either. Uh, so that is a month where we do take a break and then we'll be back in action in September. So uh, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at some of the other currencies. Let's take a look at what's happening, really. If you look at the euro, US dollar, I mean, you're getting some nice smooth cycles here on the daily. We're getting some good moves on money bars as well. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart, you can see we're in a very, very difficult sort of space where there is not really much of a longer term trend. 
just there. Looks like the market market may be bottoming out here. So we may see some open equity to the upside now over the longer term. Let's see. We don't know. Um, looking at the pound dollar again, clean, clear, steady downward trend that we've seen uh, over the period of at least the better part of this year. Um, you can see at least from February onwards, we have lost a lot of ground to the US dollar. Uh, we were at 133. Um, we were at $133 to the pound. We're now at only $123 uh, to the pound. So quite a significant decrease just there. Continue to monitor that. Dollar Swiss, um, we're pushing lower. We've got a cash in trade set up on this primary just here. Um, according to the system, that's actually not a valid trade. According to the system, this would have been taken out on its initial stop loss. I need to really update that and I will do that shortly. But on the cash, we are running this short for the time being. So let's be monitoring that. Uh, dollar Japanese yen not doing too much today, nor is the Aussie dollar after the large moves yesterday. Uh, let's take a look at some of the other world markets. And gold continuing its uh, upward trend that it's had for quite a while now just here. You can see that gold is now increasing after a long, long time. Um, that is now moving higher just there. So that's pretty much it in terms of uh, the world market. Let's take a look. Oil. Oil has been pushing lower for quite a while now uh, and is on a downward trend once again on the weekly. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly. You can see a, a, a variation too in, in inside market compression at this time, but pushing lower, looking as though it's going for this low just here. So we'll keep a look out on that. Uh, an interesting chart on oil. It may go for some of these lows. Um, the FTSE 100, again, it's really over the period of years, actually, really not really doing too much. This FTSE 100 from a longer term perspective, lots of indecision around this market. Take a look. We reached highs um, towards mid last year of 7, 8, 70. We haven't been able to get anywhere near that um, this year. It's been really something that's been pushing uh, higher, but not really getting back near that as well. It's lost a lot of momentum here as well, this chart. If you look at the Dow, again, look at this. Um, the Dow was quite an interesting chart because we had a, uh, let's look at this, the not the Dow, but let's look at the S&P 500. This was quite an interesting chart because here we had a confirmed swing high. Um, the Dow was also pretty interesting as well. Yeah, again, got a confirmed swing high. You can see the pullback that's taking place here. This is a first interruption. And we know that first interruptions generally do tend to fail. Keep a lookout on this for a move to the downside, at least in the short term. The S&P 500, again, look, take a look. We've got first interruption just here. Um, could very easily fail. So let's see what happens. Part this day is just opened. So this is a long day yet to go on the US markets. We'll see what happens to this. But there could be a move lower to break yesterday's previous low that is a strong possibility um not if it doesn't do it today over a period of next week uh, look out for that so that's what i'm looking for in the world markets bitcoin i also noticed has retraced a little bit off of its highs um again an interesting move because we were down at around about the 3500 market pushed up to 137 and now going back lower as well back down to the 10,000 figure it's left lots of gaps just here as well um, which i do believe will be filled before we get a longer term move higher so again something to be on the lookout for uh, on this chart on the bitcoin chart so do be on the lookout lots of volume coming into that market um an interesting a longer term investment as well something that you could look at for a longer term buy and hold so that's it uh, on the market update what i want to do is talk to you about trading hardware a slightly different topic um, to what we normally cover which is a theory based topic on technical analysis but i want to talk a little bit about trading hardware because i've been experimenting with some interesting things uh, over the last couple of months and i just want to show you what i'm using at the moment so for uh, for those of you that know me i mean you'll know that i'm pretty much into my computer hardware um, have been for a very 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 long time actually since since I was quite young I actually got my first PC when I was seven uh, and really the 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 fascination started then um, for those of you that have been around a while uh, it was a 386 sx25 um, so uh, it was a uh, it was an interesting machine 25 megahertz um, for those of you in the newer generation, probably won't even know that that was possible. Um, where we're using 
to 2.453 4 gigahertz machines right now processors uh, that was a 25 megahertz uh, computer with 3 megabytes of RAM uh, really really interesting which actually I later on expanded to 5 megabytes of RAM so um, it was a quite an interesting machine uh, and what we're using now obviously has progressed and evolved so much and these guys do a great range of trading PCs I've found uh, these machines generally tend to be excellent for people who want to have um, more than more than one monitor uh, I'm currently working with this stand as well this seems to be a pretty good stand um, again I'll put all the links to this in my YouTube video below uh, so you can access this and they're not affiliate links as well so I mean you just access them we don't get paid anything to recommend this is just genuinely a personal um, choice uh, in terms of trading hardware and I thought it would be interesting to cover this because we haven't done anything like this before um, this is a quad arm stand it's really good because it really frees up desk space uh, and that's why I really like it uh, so the only downside with this uh, that I found is that um, it is a little bit stiff to uh, to tw to swivel some of these arms so once you once you change them they pretty much do lock in place but to move the actual uh, the arms in a certain direction there's a little bit of tension uh, and they do provide you all the tools that you need like the allen keys and things like that but Having said that, I mean, I would have liked the stand to have been a little bit more fluid. That's the only downside. Other than that, it's an excellent stand. It works really well. It's really solid, rigid. Um, things don't move around once they're fixed. And uh, I, I use this personally. I think it's great. Uh, and very, very reasonably priced as well. I mean, you can see that to get a, a, a quad arm stand for that kind of a price point, it's next to nothing. Uh, monitors that... Um, that I use here as well. Uh, you can see I'm currently using this uh, Samsung CF24 F390. It's a curved monitor, uh, which is really nice with, um, it's a really nice curvature. It's, it just looks really good as well. Um, it's quite attractive. I'm using the 24 inch version. There's a 27 inch version as well. Um, and this is, I think it's a, it's a great monitor. It provides a great picture. Uh, it has an eye saver mode, which I, um, have it in constantly basically I have never used the non eye strain mode which will be much brighter uh, but uh, it's a it's an excellent all-round monitor it works well with this stand as well um, you have to if you buy this monitor and you want to fix it to this stand one thing that I realized while doing that process you have to actually open up the back cover uh, remove the actual uh, the actual uh, mount here the actual desk mount that it's got uh, currently and from there you can use those four holes those um, points to actually mount it onto the uh, to the monitor uh, so it is a little bit scary by the way doing that um, when I when I ran that process uh, it was actually a little scary drilling into the uh, sorry drilling in but screwing into the back of that monitor with those screws because the screws actually do look quite long um, but they are actually the correct ones so they do actually work so it's just a uh, yeah it's an interesting experience to do that so this is just a little combination of hardware that i'm using i just thought it'd be good to uh, to talk about that um and that pretty much brings me to uh, an end really so well uh, that's pretty much it in terms of this week's market update I look forward to speaking to you all soon until the next time stay disciplined follow your training plan keep trading like a master bye for now